Next speaker is, uh, is uh, Turin Ozan, uh, CCO of Turkish Airlines. So, uh, Turin, if you want to come up and join us, thanks. He's had 10 years' experience um, in the supply chain space, um, 10 years' experience in uh, th 3PL and freight forwarding as well. Um, and he's pretty much been all the way around uh, the world in his, in his profession. He uh, was the head of SIVA here for a while and uh, a number of other global roles. So um, we have asked him to give us a bit of a presentation of what's going on in the world that he sees, what's happening around uh, what part Turkish Airlines is playing and what's happening. Um, big country, just up the road there at the other end of the Gulf, so I'm sure he's got lots to tell us about. Thanks, Turin. Thank you. Cheers, mate. So thank you, Kim, for the introduction. And dear Supply Chain Logistics Arabia participants, Salaam Alaikum, good morning. Indeed, I am very pleased to be here, to have this opportunity to talk to you, uh, because of two reasons mainly. First, I am a almost 25 years supply chain and logistics professional, served in several manufacturing and distributor companies in automotive and retail and express and in third party logistics and freight forwarding. And the second reason is during this tenure for a short while, I was a Dubai resident as a supply chain professional of a global logistics and forwarding company as regional managing director. And now, I am at the other side of the table as the chief cargo officer of the fastest growing global air carrier company, namely Turkish Cargo, and I am very delighted to be here. The technology gods are frowning on us. <laughs> All good? Is it that? There must be a, a joke about three men and a computer, is there? Okay. I think so. <laughs> Maybe we need a woman, Nadia, to come up and get things operating. Here we go. Good stuff. But I cannot control. Let me see. Okay, we do have that. Yeah. Are you able to turn the pages? Okay, we'll do like that. No problem. No there problem. Okay. So very shortly about uh, Turkish Airlines and Turkish Cargo. So established in 1933 and started to cargo business uh, very quickly. But the real uh, exposure of the company is in the last 15 years worldwide, both from the passenger side and air freight side. And I can say that by this year, Turkish Airlines carrying more than 1.1 million tons of cargo worldwide, claiming 3% of the global air cargo market. So what is unique about Turkish Airlines and Turkish cargo and how this uniqueness can help you create value for your supply chains. In fact, Turkish Airlines has the most extensive global network within the passenger and cargo operators. We are flying to 120 countries more than 250 international destinations and total of 300 international destinations. And this makes Turkish Cargo and Turkish Airlines indeed one of the most extensive network owners. 
If you break down the destinations, you will see also a high exposure into the Middle East, flying to more than 34 destinations and several in Africa, again, uh, to 51 destinations. So these numbers makes Turkish Airlines and Turkish Cargo as its subsidiary as one of the best network owners worldwide. Just to give you some, some overview, these are the freighter white body routes of the com company. So a total of 34 destinations with 112 flights per week. Indeed, I'm sure most of you are aware or just witnessed uh, in, in cargo business, basically, there is a lower deck cargo in the industry, what is called belly cargo and freighter cargo planes. So when you take on a plane, you will probably see they are loading into the lower deck, the cargo parcels and collies. So this is called lower deck. It is like, uh, you can consider like capillaries of a body for the network, but also there are full freighter freighters, full cargo freighters, from 60 tons up to 120 tons that also connect the main uh, origins and destinations from a network perspective. So basically here you are seeing the white body uh, frequencies and in total you see narrow body and the freighter frequencies as well. Those are for Africa to 51 destinations. Again, uh, a very significant number to Americas, just to give you an overview and insight to Asia Pacific region, Europe, both West, Central and East. This passenger network as I meant, is also strengthened by cargo planes. A total of 73 cities has been reached by currently 16 cargo planes uh, to reach to 18 by the end of this year and uh, with different volumes and with different uh, ranges as you will see on the map about the capabilities of the freighter uh, planes uh, access. Here, the important thing is to uh, make your network integrated between the freighter planes and the passenger uh, lower deck belly cargoes because the connectivity, the accessibility that you provide to you, that the carriers provide to you, to many of the logistics and supply chain uh, companies and professionals, is that you are creating a network with a lot of artilleries and a lot of capillaries. And the way you connect them and the, the, the way you uh, integrate them makes the network uh, accessibility and network capacity uh, to reach to a certain level where the expectations by the customers, expectations by the final cargo owners uh, can be fully met. Here you can see some numbers related to freighter business of uh, Turkish cargo recently, by the end of this year, reached to 72 cargo plane destinations and with a 2.6 flights per week uh, in terms of frequency. This shows how uh, the volumes and the network accessibility is developed uh, during this year. I would like to very shortly mention about the Istanbul new airport as well. It is currently under construction and planned to be operative by the end of October 2018. The first phase for the airport will be basically a 2 million ton cargo village. By 2023 it will be 3.5 million and by 2020 2020 3.5 million and 2023 by 25.5 million. 
uh, and Turkish cargo investment uh, terminal and uh, capacity investments are in line growing with this timeline uh, to 1.2 million currently to 2 million and 3.5 million just to uh, give you an idea on how this new airport will change from a cargo hub perspective of the uh, Middle East uh, region. One of the main drivers behind the air global cargo market, here you will see some growth uh, numbers for this year of the main trade lanes between Asia, Europe, Europe, Asia, Trans-Pacific to Middle East, uh, North, South, Europe to Africa and the other way. Just you will see many numbers to be quite high, some double digit. Basically, one of the key drivers behind this for this year, I would say e-commerce. E-commerce is a key impact to, to the way the competition and the market evolves within the air carriers. It is growing in a very high level and expected to grow even further. And air carriers, Turkish cargo and any other, definitely are aiming to have a good service and uh, business of that by providing value to global e retailers. Basically, in terms of priorities, in terms of visibility, in terms of, in terms of standard services or sometimes even low cost deferred services, many air cargo carriers and again Turkish cargo within are capable to provide uh, this uh, support to the growth of the e-commerce worldwide. All, in all these growth and uh, expectation, expectations, the network accessibility and network connection provided by air carriers is critical. That's why we know that uh, we have this unique advantage to many of the global retailers, manufacturers, and e-commerce e uh, market uh, players that we can make this difference. I can also say that uh, when we consider UAE market from air cargo and freight perspective, this year, Turkish cargo became the third largest cargo carrier after the first two national flag carriers, eventually, to connect UAE to the world with its uh, unique network capabilities. So I would like to thank you uh, and waiting for your questions. I hope the time is okay. Yeah, okay, great. No, I, I guess I've got one uh, of you, Turin. Um, there's been, um, you know, there's been some dynamic activity in the airline sector in this part of the world in recent times, um, and you know, you guys regionally positioned. Um, are you seeing any changes in your demand flow from clients in relation to the Gulf over the last few months, or is, are things pretty much stable in terms of capacity versus demand, or have things changed at all? Uh, the market is relatively stable. Uh, from a global perspective, I can say that uh, with, the, uh, with the flourish of the e-commerce and several uh, manufacturing volumes, especially in Far East and in Europe, usually the yields this year uh, are increasing globally. So the cost is increasing, unfortunately, because the demand, mainly driven by e-commerce, is higher than the supply. However, the supply keeps up just a few years later with the additional capacity into the market. However, into the Middle East is a little bit uh, more stagnant, I should say, maybe due to the uh, regional market conditions, but uh, Middle East and in specific UAE has always been uh, a center of uh, logistics, including to air cargo and uh, air freight logistics as a, as a hub, I should say, between east to west and north to south uh, main trade lanes. Uh, very similar to of what uh, Istanbul 
is claiming. Uh, that's why I believe that the market in the long run uh, will keep up. And as Turkish cargo, uh, we are determined to be in the, uh, within the top uh, service providers in this part of the world because it is very important for the air cargo market. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, a couple of questions out the back. There we go. So who's got the, you've got it, sir. Yes. Hey, Doran. Good to see you. Hey, good mate. to see you too, Shailen. <laughs> And uh, my question is that, you know, how do you see the growth going forward, you know, with the turmoil in the shipping industry? Is it helping the airline uh, cargo to grow? And uh, worldwide, we keep hearing of stagnation. So how do you foresee growth in the Middle East and, you know, European region especially? Thank you. Uh, I mean, of course, I can now see a bit more uh, from uh, air cargo uh, market perspective. Uh, I can say that uh, r at least for the last few years, uh, the growth is relatively uh, less than what it used to be. However, I think this is a, a temporary situation. The market, I believe, uh, and the players are adapting themselves to a new environment where uh, the growths at least are not matching to double digits, which used to be in the previous times, uh, and the competition uh, severs. But this is more healthy. In the long run, uh, from a geographical perspective, and as far as I can see from the vision perspective, this part of the uh, world, uh, UAE and Middle East, and mainly Gulf and UAE, will continue to be the uh, key, one of the key uh, areas for global uh, logistics and supply chain. This is very important. That's why uh, we, from the Turkish Airlines perspective, uh, give uh, maximum uh, importance, emphasize uh, to our uh, activities in Middle East in general, and Gulf, and in specific in UAE. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. One more question in the middle here. Yes, sir. Name, please. Hi. Good morning. I'm Pierre, working for MS Logistics. I wanted to know what are the main challenges or critical success factors that you have identified in order to supply the e-commerce business? Uh, actually, thank you for the question. Uh, very important part uh, of, uh, of, of the communication I wanted. Uh, first of all, the visibility. Uh, as sub similar to supply chain, as a part of the supply chain indeed, uh, air cargo processes are quite fragmented. And there are several players coming from the shippers, the owners of the cargo, to freight forwarders, IATA agents, to air carriers, cargo carriers, like Turkish cargo, uh, Sky cargo, and several uh, in the market, and airport authorities, handling agents, sometimes sales agents, and so on and so forth. So it's a very fragmented process. And the integration, system-wise, but also from a uh, quick response perspective, capability perspective, not only IT, it's, it's more from a uh, company culture and people-wise as well. Uh, the integration is very important. When you don't have this integration well set, uh, or at least well tuned, then the visibility to the uh, owner of the cargo, the shipper, uh, is limited or again is fragmented. I believe this is the most important uh, aspect that challenges the market from also uh, competition and looking from the supply chain perspective. I can't say that this is perfectly going well. There are several companies uh, like uh, Turkish Airlines who, which invest heavily to sub sustain, I mean, create and sustain this integration. Uh, and it will take time from my perspective as, as far as I can see. Uh, however, uh, it is critical because at the end uh, you have an